Well, good morning, everybody. Hi, Anissi. Hi, Teresa. And anybody else that's out there, please let me know if you can see me and if you can hear me good. Because my last live, for a little bit, they couldn't see me. I had to reload. And it looked all fine on my side, but nobody was seeing me. <laughs> Onisi says she's watching while she's crocheting. Uh, the teddy bear. Awesome. That is so cool. So, um, Nisi, I know you're crocheting at the same time, but if you could just say yes, maybe, or um, Teresa, if you could tell me if you can hear me and if you can see me. That would be totally awesome because I don't want to keep going. Hello. How are you? Can you see me and hear me? Curs um, Curtis, um, I just had a little bit of trouble last my last live and not everybody could see and hear me. Um, hello, Michelle. Southern Roots, how are you this morning? So this live is going to be kind of fun. Oh, good, good. Everything is good. Um, oh, good, everybody. It's all good. You know, I hadn't ever had to um, worry about that till my last live, and it was black, I guess, for a little teeny bit. Addie, hello. How are you this morning? Addie, have you ever been in one of my lives this morning? Um, either my morning ones or my night ones. If you haven't, thanks for stopping by. Um, Lisa says, we can hear and see you from, <laughs> oh, minus four degrees in Illinois. Oh, snowed in. Oh, oh, and Addie says it's her first time. Thanks for coming by. So today is going to be kind of a fun, different kind of live. Not that I haven't painted on a live before, because I have but not for a long time. Yesterday I was out with um, three other artists and on Thursday mornings we go different places in town or in the foothills and we paint. So we were going out to the um, golf course out in the foothills. It was so incredibly windy. It was crazy. LG, how are you? Good morning. And it was, <laughs> but luckily there was this it was like this huge shipping container in way off past their parking lot and it blocked the wind. So what we were going to paint different things on the golf course, too windy. So we painted the mountains, which was totally fun. I'm going to show you and I have a question on one of the paintings on to see what you think. Helpine, how are you? I love that bunny rabbit. Yeah. <laughs> Heather, how are you this morning? Good morning. Just good morning to everybody. That is just awesome. Everybody popping in. So I did a painting yesterday that was just with a palette knife. And then it was it was warm besides being windy. And it just kept um, drying the paint out. You know, even when I'm using a palette knife and you're using gobs of paint, so then I switched to pastel because I had some uh, some pastels down here too. So this was my first one. It's three inches by nine inches. So it's just a fun, funky little picture. See, it's all the sides are painted. It's just fun, you know, and I actually might add some little things into it, you know, because it's, of course, all the way dry. Sometimes when I'm doing it, I'll seal it with a spray and then I paint again and then it gives it some more depth in there. Ram, how are you this morning? Nice to see ya. Lisa says that it was windy at her house too yesterday. Oh, thank you so much. Just a fun little silly thing that I was doing. Thank you. So this one, this is the pastel I'm gonna show you. Now this is my idea. I need to know what you think if I should put the bird going towards me or going away from me. And you'll see in just a second what I mean by that. Now, remember, it's pastel. And I'm using just a soft pastel. There's different kinds of pastels. There's ones that are much harder. They're the soft ones. There's oil-based pastels. And I was just actually just using some cheap ones at Walmart because I didn't bring any of my pastels down. But the other girls that were all the other girls, the artists, 
were have been using pastels every single week. And I thought, well, I'll just go to Walmart. I'll just buy some soft pastels and just see what happens. You know, now their containers of pastels that they have are just fabulous. I know that the one box that Patty had, just the one box, $300. Just wow. <laughs> Emmy Sunshine, hello. How are you this morning? Um, it does kind of look like a rock sculpture. Um, it's very textural. I don't know if you can tell that. That's kind of hard to tell. But when you feel it, it's really lots of up and down, up and down. And Lisa, I do too. I like it when, um, I, I like it because, you know, if I'm hanging it or I'm selling it, somebody doesn't have to frame it. If, you know, and so a lot of times when I have big canvases, I get the really thick, um, it's called gallery wrap. And I paint all the way around. I just kind of think it finishes it. And then you don't have to have a frame at all. And so that's not an expense to me or to somebody that's buying some art. And I just like that. Teresa says that they lost power. That is windy then. Windy, windy, windy. So anyway, down here in Yuma, you know, it's very desert. But then all of a sudden it has these huge mountains. Not mountains like back home, because back home the mountains would have pine trees on them. These have cactus. <laughs> but... A lot of times the very purplish, bluish colored yesterday morning, they were more tan and browns and stuff like that, but the sun wasn't hitting them the way it does sometimes. Though in this pastel, I may go back and add lots of, uh, more purples, but you, let's do that. Yeah, um, Teresa, is your um, power back on now or are you just watching the live on your phone? Um, M.A. Sunshine says, I love when they paint all the way around. Me too. I just, I just love that. You know, it's very cool. Okay. So here's the pastel. Now, okay. So there's the pastel. You can see, oh, over on this side, those little teeny birds, right? Now this section right here on this side, what I want to do is make a large bird. Um, so that you can see the details in the feathers. And so I could do it two different ways. If I make the bird facing on the canvas, it'll make it look like all those other little birds. I can't go this way. It's backwards when I'm looking at it. Um, like the birds are flying at you. If I do the back end of the bird on this side, it would make it look like all the birds were going into the mountain and it could probably draw you into the mountain more. And so that's what I'm kind of going for. And so um, I just thought I'd, since you guys are here and you know I'm going to paint, I thought, well, I'll just see what everybody's opinion is on that. Um, have them fly towards you more interesting. See, I did think that what might be interesting because, you know, you could have the eye of the bird and the beak and it's coming right at you and have one of the wings on the canvas and the other one, like it's off the canva, canvas or partway off the canvas. So I thought that could be interesting. Um, one of the artists thought I should do it towards the mountains and you could see, um, you know, the wing and maybe the side angle of the beak which would be interesting. Um, see, because we're getting mixed mixed views. See, I haven't decided, but I'll make sure that I post when I do it. So what I thought I might do is I'll sketch out the bird on paper coming towards me, sketch it with the bird going away, cut it out, and then just put it next to the painting and see which, which one... I like better. Um, it's hard to decide stuff like that. And see, we're getting interesting. Um, very pretty. I have an idea of the big bird flying away. 
um, whose view is it yours or the bird's view? Hmm, interesting. Birds going away. Um, what about a small bird like a finch just sitting on a branch? Now, I thought about that, you know, because there's trees in the bottom, you know, and maybe having a branch that comes out over here, which I could have birds sitting on there. And that would be interesting, too. Um, I just, you know, because right now it's more just background. And I just wanted something that would really just pop out and people go, oh, you know, and the background is, you know, it's fine, but that's not the focal point. Um, Rem says, I'm going towards the mountains. I think the bird flying sideways so you can still see the head and at least one wing. Well, I think, um, M.A. Sunshine, that either way, you know, even with it coming towards me, I'll make it like it. you can see all one wing and only part of one wing. And if it's flying the other way, I think I will do the same thing. Um, because I like the idea of that part. Oh, Charmaine is in here. Hello, Charmaine. How are you? Charmaine, we're talking about, this is a pastel I worked on yesterday outside, plein air. And what I'd like to do is put a bird right here. And I'm trying to decide if I should put the bird coming towards me or going away. And it would be larger. So you would see like the head one wing, the part of the body. And so that would be the focal point in the pastel painting. So I'm trying to decide if I should have the bird coming towards me or the bird going away from me towards the mountains. That's what we're, that was what I was kind of needing some help, some input on why I should do that. Um, Lisa says, I love the wing, their back and the tail. I love the tail's size length. See, I think that could be real interesting. And I could do whatever kind of bird I want because those little ones in there, you can't really tell what kind they are. You just know that they're a bird. Um, so I'm really back and forth. Um, Alpine Gulch says, smart to use this sketch. I'm thinking of drawing both the towards me, back, back away from me, cutting it out and setting it on the pastel to see which way I want to do it. And look who's here, Jeannie. How are ya? Curtis, it was nice to see you this morning. Okay, so we are gonna paint this morning. And we're gonna actually, I'm gonna actually paint backwards so that you can see it straight from my computer. Bald eagle, it would look beautiful. And I do love eagles. So I'll have to think about it. But I'm gonna do it this week. And so um, I'm hoping to have it done next Friday by next Friday morning, and I will show it during the live. And I'll, I'll tell you about how I seal it and set um, pastels. So it'll, it should be fun, you know. And the fun thing about pastels, if you don't like what you're doing, you can erase it out, rub it out. It'll be fun. Um, so we're going to paint this morning. Before I do, now these have been my regular stickers that I've sent to people, right? Suburban Homesteader, Wyoming, Arizona. And I've liked them, you know, but then I went with a different company and for basically the same price, I got bigger ones. The colors are much more vibrant and more defined and it's bigger. So I have two stickers now. <laughs> Um, yep, Lisa, I just, I think it'll give me more perspective and it might be easier to do. Um, Charmaine says, if it's coming towards you, it draws your eyes to the face of the bird. Draw, draw, um, away draws your eyes to the mountain. See, and I have to just decide what is the main thing I want. When somebody looks at it, what's the feeling, the story that I want them to get out of it? Um, LG Homestead? It's nice to see you. Hope you have a nice weekend. Okay, so let's paint. Now I'm going to turn on some extra lights just because um, the canvas will be harder to see otherwise. Okay, so I'm going to set this here. I'm going to move my camera back. 
and adjust that angle a little bit. So this is our canvas. It's eight by 10. And we are gonna do a fun, interesting painting. Now, this is my canvas or my palette. What I do is, this is just a piece of glass that I got from an old picture frame. I put it on some foam board. I just cut it to the same size and then I tape all the way around it. Usually this is completely clear already, but I didn't clean it off from yesterday. The nice thing about having it on glass, I can literally just scrape that dried paint off. And it just makes it easy to do. Um, you can actually run the glass under water, but I never want to get my foam board wet. So I just take a thing and just scrape it off. You know, um, one of Joe's tools, that's a putty scraper. It comes off really easily. So if you're wanting a reusable palette, I do have a, a short on making these. And so um, we are going to paint with using that. So I'm going to set that down there. I'm going to move my palette back just a little teeny bit or my thing back. Now, this is a fun painting that you can do. Anybody can do it. It's fast. It's easy. And it makes a great little gift. And I'm, in fact, going to give it away. So I'm first going to put some white on my palette, some light blue, and I'm actually going to use um, the same brush the entire time. This is a really dark Persian blue. It's almost black looking. And a lot of times I'd rather use a really dark blue than I would let, use a black. And then another blue, okay? And this one is a thallo blue. You can use a lot of different paints. There's a lot of good companies. Um, this is the one I'm using today. Um, now, when you use a brush and acrylic, there needs to be water molecules all the way through this, all the time. A lot of times you're paintbrush will start to drag on a canvas for one of two reasons. Either it's out of paint or it's out of water. And a lot of times it's just out of water. So what I always like to do is just dip it in there, just some water. Um, I just use regular tap water. I know that there are people that use um, distilled water or spring water. I'm just using tap water. That's all, all there is to it. So what I'm going to do is so there's all my paint colors i'm going to start with white and i'm going to go right in the center now i'm actually looking at this as if you were looking at this right and so <laughs> painting backwards is kind of a a trick you have to kind of feel the canvas okay and so i'm just putting white in the center now white um, it, it's hard to see at first, right? Because the canvas is white. This is white. Then I'm going to not rinse my brush out, but I'm just going to grab a little bit of blue. And then what I'm doing is I'm going to go around that. I'm going to pull some of it in, but I don't want to lose that white center. Now, if it was too dark, I would add more white on my brush. If it was too light, I'd add more blue onto my light, onto it. Okay. So I'm not adding any more white, but I'm going to add some more blue. Now, see, I think it's getting a little bit too dark at first. So I'm going to grab some white and I'm going to just add some more white in there. Now, I'm not making this very thick. And the reason why is because I want to be able to have it dry. Um, Lisa says, used used to paint in the 70s and 80s, oils and acrylics, but children and jobs take priority. You know, Lisa, there's always seasons in our lives. And we have seasons where we can do all those artsy things. And then there's seasons when we can't, you know, life is just too busy and we just can't do it. Now, as I work my way out, I want it darker and darker and darker. So I have a little bit of white on my brush. I'm gonna add a little bit of that blue 
and a little bit of that phthalo blue that's even darker, right? And so see on my, it's got a lot of white and just a little bit of the two different blues. And if I start on the outside, see how we can just go around it again. Now, I don't wanna blend all the colors together completely. I want it to be um, so that there's a lot of color all over the place. And as we go out, we're just gonna get darker. But if it gets too dark, too soon, um, Lisa says seasons. You know what my daughter once told me? She, she was older and she says, you know, I don't remember a time that my mother didn't have paint on her jeans. Because <laughs> I was either painting um, something arts, something crafty, something in the house, something outside. And I have to honestly tell you that that was one of the best compliments I ever had. <laughs> I know it's silly, isn't it? But see how we're just going to blend that around. I'm going to move my palette just over to the side a little bit, just because I need to be able to get this very bottom too. Now, it's starting to drag. So that tells me, because I know I can see, I, I can see paint on my brush. That means that I don't have enough water. So I just dip it in a little bit and I shake it off. Because you don't want to start and then have it run down. So you don't want to do that. So I'm going to grab a little bit more paint again. And I love it when you're just grabbing. It's just very, it's interesting. It's freeing. And we're just going to go around like that. And now I'm just going to start just the two different blues. Now there's a little traces of white in my brush still. But I want especially these top corners, to be much darker. Now at this point, see how I'm up to the top on this side? Um, I wanna paint my top and my sides, but I wanna keep it pretty close to the same color that I'm doing. Now you might think, what in the world is she painting like this? But pretty soon, I'm going to show you. Now, remember, I told you earlier that I like using a really dark blue as black. And that's what we're going to do today. So we're going to get some dark in those corners. Now, I won't be able to finish the very bottom until the sides and one at least one of the sides and the top is dry. But I can always finish that after the whole painting is dry too. Let's see how we're just quickly doing that background. And it just makes it really fun and interesting. Oh, Molly's here. Molly, how are you? I hope you're having a fabulous time. Okay, I'm gonna lift that up so you can see that bottom when we do it. Now I'm on a little easel that I use all the time. And it has lots of paint on where the canvas sits. It doesn't, it doesn't matter at all. But see how I want to have that all finished like in there. And see, it looks like almost kind of a vortex. And that's really fun and interesting. Okay, so we got to finish the other side. Okay. Now, I need to blend it out and in. So I'm going to add a little bit of white. We're going to add our blue. We're going to add our dark blue. And so we can blend it in there. We're going to do the top because we want those colors to pretty much match what we're doing. The, the nice thing about after it dries, I can always, you know, add either a, a little bit lighter or darker on those edges. Or I could go completely dark, all dark blue on those edges. And that's that can be really interesting too. But we want to make sure that we're, we're getting all the colors there that we don't see any of those little um, pixelated parts of the canvas. Teresa says, um, 
it's organic. Hey, Tim, how are you? Hey, Tim, I'm going to pop this right real quick. Tim, I have a box that I'm mailing you today. Um, Tim is one of my new members and um, I had sent out all my Valentine's cards and stuff like that. And then I got to thinking, I'm going to send him some of my other stuff that I've given the members since the, first, the beginning of the year. So I have that box and I will mail that to you today, Tim. And whoo so exciting. Thanks, Nisi. She says, so neat. Now, the fun thing about doing this, like I like whites and blues, but you could do all kinds of colors and you wouldn't necessarily have to have the white, the white right in the center. You could have it way over to the side and it swirls around. I've done these and I've done purples and I've done um, reds in there and um, um, colors that are like sunsets. So it's real yellow in the center. And then as it goes out, it gets more orangey and red. And that is really fun. And so we are getting to that very edge. And so I'm just doing the blue and the dark blue. And we can just move that around. We'll do the top. We'll start doing the side. And remember, I want to blend it, but I don't want to blend it so much that it all looks like one color. I want it to be more fun. Okay, now on this corner right here, I'm actually going to make it even darker. And so remember, I had that really, really dark blue. It looks black. It's blue. I'm just going to put a little bit of that on there, and I'm going to blend that in. I'm just going to spin that around a little bit. See how that can make it more interesting? Now, that right there is a little dark for me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of white and blue, and I'm just going to soften that a little bit. Okay? And then we just have that last corner. And, of course, we have our sides. So I need to grab some of the two blues. I'm going to put those on the sides. Now, if you don't mind your sides sticking, you can turn it right away. But I don't know. <laughs> Ram says, I feel like I'm a surfer in a tuba wave. You know, my son surfs, one of our sons. And he tells me all these stories about when you're inside that wave and the feeling and the colors. And I would like to be in one of those waves, but that's way too scary for me. <laughs> okay, so I'm just doing those sides real quick. See how fast this can be? Now, this is something kids could do too. Because there's no definition of lines. And so that can be really fun. Oh my gosh, guess who's here? The Bunky girl is here. Hi, Bunky. My superhero. If you don't know Bunky, you got to check her out. I tell you, you will love her, love her, love her. Her and her sisters. But Bunky's, Bunky's my favorite. And tell your sisters, I still love all of the, all of you guys, but you know, you got a soft spot in my heart, Bunky. Okay. So we are finishing our painting. So let's do this bottom corner, bottom corner over here. And so it's so weird when I look at my screen, cause it's backwards from what I think it should be. So we're going to start with a little bit of white. We're going to add a little bit of our blue, the light blue. And then our next blue. Um, though I have really dark in this corner, I'm not going to do that in this corner. And so I'm going to lift that up a little bit just so it's easier for you guys to see that. And so I'm going to have that dark, but I don't want it overwhelmingly dark. So I'm going to add a little bit of more white for when I meet those. I think we need to pull that down a little bit. Don't you think? Now, you may notice also, at no time 
did I rinse my brush out? And that is on purpose. Um, I have done hundreds of paintings and never rinsed my brush out because I love the way it pulls colors together. And that it's totally choices. And I like a wide fat brush. Now, not always. There are times that I use a smaller brush, but I love a wide fat brush. And I'm just gonna finish that up, put a little bit of more streaking of white. I wanna make sure that I am covering all my canvas. See how you can lighten it up with just those fun little strokes of white? Because of the canvas, even though it's drying, it's not all the way dry. And it can really help. Now I'll go back in with just some blue. Soften that up a little bit. And then we have our background done. Now what in the world am I going to add to this? Now remember, I told you I wasn't going to wash my brush out. So I'm wiping the excess white off of there. And then remember, we have this really dark blue. It looks black. It seriously looks black. Um, and it's called Persian Blue Hue. I use this instead of black on so many things. I just think it gives you a better color. And I think that's really interesting. Okay, so we're not rinsing our brush out. I do want a sharp edge though. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull the color on this side and on this side because I want that really sharp edge. Because what am I gonna do? I'm literally, I'm gonna move my thing out of there so you can see from the very bottom. I'm literally gonna paint a tree in here. Now, when you're trying to de decide where you want the tree, do I wanna cover up this very center or do I want that to be left, right? And so I'm actually gonna start right over here and I'm gonna come up with a trunk. Got a branch going over. Now remember, I'm painting with this edge right here. And so I will run out of paint quickly. Let's see how we're starting. Now, one of the things that can be real fun is once I get the tree, I could add an owl in there. I could add birds. I could add all kinds of stuff, or I could just leave the tree as it is. But remember, every time I want to add paint, I'm doing it on both sides. So I get that sharp edge. Okay, but it still has paint in there. And so we're going to bring our trunk up again. Now, <clears throat> you could have your trunk as wide or um, um, as thick as you want it. It's totally up to you. You can make the tree go all the way up to the top. You can have it short. Um, it's real interesting. And pieces of that. I could have a little surfer guy there. And seriously, you could paint anything you want. Now I'm going to do a tree that doesn't have any leaves, but you could, you could do cactuses. You could do um, like a sunset and make everything in shadow. You could just do a million different things. Um, see, this is what the whole idea, Lisa, you're so right. I want a tree that shows the moon, and the cloudy, the cloudy sky, and I want it to, um, that you know it's really nighttime, it's dark, there's nobody around. I just, I, I just love that feeling of what art can do. Okay, so we're gonna work on our tree, we're going up. Now, could I cross part of the, the moon? I could. Now, anytime it starts to get too thick, you know you need a little bit of water. Okay, so we're just dipping it, tapping it. I always like to tap it. You don't want a whole bunch of molecules. And then if you, if you can see molecules, what you do is you just 
press it over to the side, and then you're going to grab your paint. Because remember, your brush, your bristles on your brush need water in between them. And though it looks like it's completely solid, there are water molecules everywhere. Now, if it makes it easier for you to um, use a smaller brush, use a smaller brush. It doesn't really matter, you know, do whatever you would like to do. And you can have as many branches as you want. You know, we'll do the top of the tree. We can add more in here. And we just go on and on with branches. See how it's shaping up? Now, right here, that's a little thick, but I might make something right there because of it. See what I mean? Um, Teresa says she likes photos that do that. I do too. It's just so interesting. So we're just going to add some more in there. Now don't press too hard because the harder you press, the wider those branches are going to be. Now, another thing, another trick, if your branches get too thick, an easy way to fix that is to make your trunk wider because then it looks more in perspective. See how it does that? It looks, because you don't want your trunk thinner than any of your branches. And so that makes it easier Funky, thanks so much. See, this would be a fun thing for you and your sisters to do. You could just do all kinds of colors in the background. It could be just so fun. Now, I also have to decide, I'm gonna let those branches dry just a little bit, but I need to decide about my trunk and I'm gonna widen it down here, right? I'm gonna widen it over here so that it's grounded into the, the soil. And see how that can make a difference? I'm gonna get my brush a little bit wet because I can feel that tug. Getting that paint again. Now I'm gonna give this away. And so I'm gonna just make that a little bit more distinctive. You know, not so, I don't want it too even. That's what I, I'm trying to say is, you know, texture on the ground. Now at this point, I'm gonna add a little bit more in there because there could be rocks, there could be grass, there could be a lot of things. Now, I'm gonna grab a little tiny brush. Now I'm gonna show you two different things. I'm gonna show you doing it with the fat brush. I'm gonna show you doing it with the thin brush just so that it makes it easier for you. Of course, we have to get this wet. Now this is a, a flat brush, it's not a rounded brush. And so I'm gonna do both sides. I'm gonna to try to keep it thin. Got a little bit too much water on there, so I'm gonna do that. I'm going to lift this up. I'm going to put that brush right over there. I'm going to lift that up. And I'm painting like this, not like this, like this. And that way I can just pull some grass up and make some texture down there. You can do as little or as lot, any kind of texture that you want. But remember, everything is in silhouette. So Say I do, you know, some plant material up there. Maybe it has a seed head on it, things like that. Let me bring that to you more. See how I'm doing that? So it looks like there's some seed heads onto those grasses. It can make it more interesting instead of just some straight lines. Anything that you want to do. Okay, so we're going to add a little bit more 
paint to that. And we can do some more. I'm going to lift it up. Actually, I'm going to put it up there and that might, that'll hold it for you. And then you can see that a little bit more. Now you can make rocks. You could do all kinds of stuff. Um, I'm going to put some seed heads over there too. Things like that. See how it, and you can see that better close up. Okay. Now, if I wanted to do that with my fat brush, I'm going to set that over in the water, actually. I'm going to get that a little bit wet. We'll get some paint on there. And let's see if we can do the same thing with this fat brush. I'll pop that up there again so you can watch it. And see how we can just... See how you can just still do the same thing. We can cross that trunk. We can cross different grasses too. And then if we want to do the seed head, we're just going to take a corner of it and add those seed heads in. So either way, you can do it fat brush or, th or the thin brush. Totally up to you. Now, if I wanted to do some really tiny lines on the branches. A, a little brush is easier. Okay, so I'm got a little bit too much water on there. When you go to add your paint, if it seems to be moving too fast, usually you have too much water on there. So I'm gonna just, I'm gonna pull that over here because I really wanna flatten that brush out. And then we can start Adding thin branches onto those. Branches onto branches. You know, anything that you want to do. Because this is a little brush, it doesn't hold very much paint. And so you're always going back and forth to get more paint. Let's see how we can just keep adding as many or as few branches as you want. It's totally up to you on what you decide. Now, my, my tree is going very much this way. I need to add some branches over onto this side because you don't want it lopsided, right? I'm going to set the palette down in here just so I can get it quickly and easily. And we are going to add more branches over here. And we just always padding both sides of the, the paintbrush because we want to be able to pull it, add more branches. It makes it really pretty quick if your palette is right next to your canvas. Now, I always like to do a painting. I let it dry. I like to always take photographs of the painting because what you think you see is not always what you see. And so that can be helpful. But see how it's starting to fill in. I think I need a little bit thicker branch right in here. Make that branch a little bit wider, a more stable branch. See how we can just pull that together. And as it dries, sometimes you'll all of a sudden see the pick, um, like maybe the canvas a little bit, or maybe you haven't covered all the white enough. Oh, Rebecca's in. Hello, Rebecca. How are you? Tim says he loves Charlie Brown trees. I do too. They're just fabulous. And so the more you work at this, the more branches you put in there. See, we're going to thicken that up a little bit because it's just not quite thick enough there. Now, remember my hint. If you ever... If your tree ever starts to look too top heavy, what are you going to do? You're going to add a more, more girth to the, the trunk because you can make that tree wider and wider so that it matches what you have on top. You don't want it to look like it's going to topple over. Now, I am thinking this right in here 
it needs another more solid branch. So let's add some more in there. And I should switch to my larger brush because that would be much easier. Now, usually um, it's a little bit rounded where one large branch matches another large branch. Now over here, this is way too wide for me. I think I need to make an owl there. So let's, let's make an owl. And remember, everything is silhouetted. So there's no distinction of what, um, you know, like you're not going to see the eyes. I mean, I suppose you could put eyes in there and have them like glowing or something. But we're just going to make the silhouette of a great horned owl. Now, I'm painting backwards, so it gives me a different look. So I need to go more this way, more rounded. I'm going to let that dry for a little bit. I think this needs a little more rounded too. But you could put a cat up there. You could do all kinds of stuff. I'm going to let that sit for a little bit. It's a weird perspective when it's backwards. And I always like to seal my paintings. There's a lot of different things you can seal it with. You can, um, you can buy a lot of expensive art things to seal it with. But Kevlon makes this triple thick, crystal clear, clear coat. It works perfect for paintings. And so before I send this to the winner, I am actually going to clear coat it so that it... Um, works for them and then nothing will happen to the painting. I'm making a few more thicker branches. So it's, it's coming together. Let me make that go closer to you. So we got a, few, a little bit of a branch, but see this branch right here that's coming out into the moon. I need it thicker right in here. It looks too unstable to me. So let's make it thicker right down in here. See how it looks? It looks better now. Maybe we um, have a couple, you know, little branches coming off. And this is where it, it can really add up in time is all those small branches. And so I'm not going to show you every single one of those, but be, the winner know that I will have all those in there. It does kind of look like a cat. I'm thinking more cat than owl. But see, the thing about it, when it's a silhouette, whoever's looking at the painting gets to decide that also. So that is kind of fun and interesting. So I'm going to make some other thicker lower branches. But you guys get the idea. And I'm going to give it away. Now, we're at 50 minutes right now. Um, after the live, I'm going to finish this. I'm going to spray it. I'll post it on the community tab when it actually looks like in the finished part. I'll have my signature on there. I'll have a wire hanger on the back. All the sides will be finished. And somebody's going to win. So I'm going to move this out of the way. And that, I'm going to put my paintbrushes in the water for right now. I'm going to set that down. I'm going to move my camera again. And we are going to pick a winner. So let's slide my camera back. We're going to go back up. Ah! <laughs> so I'm going to have the computer pick the winner. So what I do is um, make sure that you make a comment um, in the like in the last 10 minutes, if you haven't made a comment in the last 10 minutes, make sure you do. And um, that way the computer 
it randomly picks, but it only goes back to um, the last 10 minutes because that's what how it's set up. And so, oh, Dan is in here too. Hi, Dan. How are you? I didn't see you pop in. So I am going to type exclamation mark winner and the computer is going to pick. So if I don't, if you know, I don't have your physical address, make sure that you email me that and that way I can send it to you because I'll need a physical address. You do have to live in the United States, continental United States and be over 18 years old. So let's see who Nightbot will pick. See how I have an exclamation mark winner? That's the code so that he, Nightbot will pick a winner. And Nightbot picks Bunky's Garden. Bunky, you are the winner. Oh, Dan says he popped in quietly. <laughs> so Bunky, I know I have the Vineyard Chicks um, um, address. And so I will send that out to you. I will let it dry this weekend. I'll finish it, let it dry. And at Monday morning, I will mail that to you. So congratulations, Bunky. That is so exciting. Everybody, I hope you enjoyed this. Um, I would like to do some other painting ones. I want to go backwards, but I just thought it would be fun to go backwards this time. And there are some fun techniques that you can use with a lot of different paints by adding mediums to them. And then it starts to move all on its own. It can be really fun. And so I thought I would do a few more art paintings. I will show you next Friday what I decided on the bird forward or backwards. I'll have that on a post um, or I'll do it on, I'll show it on the video on the live stream, but I'll have it on a post in the community tab too. But everybody have a great weekend. We're at 51 minutes, 52 minutes. And I appreciate it. It was fun this morning. I just wanted a live that was a little bit different, a little bit fun. And so everybody, thanks so much for popping in. And Bunky, again, congratulations on winning the little painting. And I will mail that out to you on Monday when it's all sealed and everything. Okay. Thanks everybody.